Eurystheus dropped another gruesome task on Hercules, snagging Zeus's golden apples. Easy, right? Wrong. These weren't your average apples, they were divine snacks, Gaia's wedding gifts to Zeus and Hera. Hera, who didn't want to see Hercules succeed, this would be an impossible task. Hercules' journey was no walk in the park. He had no clue where to find those elusive golden apples, so he set off on a whirlwind adventure across Libya, Egypt, Arabia, and Asia. But as luck would have it, trouble seemed to find him at every turn. First up, he crossed paths with Kyknos, the hot-headed son of the war god, Ares. Hercules didn't back down from a fight and sent Kyknos packing up to Hades. Next, he bumped into the old man of the sea, Nereus, who held the secret location of the garden. But Nereus wasn't exactly eager to spill the beans. He shapeshifted like a boss, trying to slip through Hercules' grasp. But our hero wasn't about to let him slip away that easily. After a game of aquatic cat and mouse, Nereus caved and spilled the beans. But the adventure didn't stop there. Antaeus, the son of Poseidon, tried to throw Hercules off his game by getting a power boost from Mother Earth herself. But Hercules wasn't fooled. He lifted Antaeus off the ground and squeezed the life out of him in a bear hug. Last but not least, Hercules crossed paths with Busiris, the king of Egypt, who had a twisted idea of hospitality. He thought sacrificing strangers would cure a drought. Hercules wasn't about to be anyone's sacrificial lamb, so he broke free and gave Busiris a taste of his own medicine. Then came the ultimate showdown. Hercules met Prometheus, chained to a rock, enduring the gruesome torment of an eagle feasting on his liver every single day. In a true act of heroism, Hercules vanquished the eagle and earned Prometheus gratitude. And guess what? Prometheus spilled the beans on how to get those golden apples. It involved a clever switcheroo with Atlas, the titan with a celestial chiropractic problem. Hercules struck a deal with Atlas. He'd hold up the sky while Atlas fetched the apples. As predicted, who would willingly hold up the weight of the world if given the chance to grab some golden fruit? Atlas eagerly agreed to the task. But just as Atlas returned triumphantly with the golden, after Atlas got a taste of freedom, he cunningly proposed a trade. Hercules holds the sky and earth for him, while he delivers the prized fruit to Eurystheus. Hercules played along but asked Atlas whether he could take it back again, just for a moment, while the hero put a just position to bear the weight of the sky and the earth. Atlas put the apples on the ground and lift the burden back, and just like that, Hercules snagged the apples and hot-footed it back to Eurystheus, leaving Atlas wanting to kick himself. But here's the kicker, the apples couldn't stay with Eurystheus, being divine and all. So, Athena swooped in and reclaimed them, whisking them back to their celestial garden. Hercules may not have gotten to keep the golden loot, but hey, at least he got another wild adventure under his belt.